Howdy friends. Uh, today we're going to do a very, a very familiar parable uh, that has so, it's become so ubiquitous in our society. We even have laws named after this, um, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And while I know you know this, listen carefully to what's actually said rather than what we think we know. Uh, if you're anything like me, there are some times where there's a story you know so well that you don't really pay attention. And when you actually do, you may find that there are things you didn't know or you missed in the first time. So here we go. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus and he said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and live. But wanting to justify himself to Jesus, he says, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, who came to the place and saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, when he saw him, was moved to pity. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, and having poured oil and wine on them, he took his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? And the lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, Go. And do likewise. Right? Obvious story. Priests and Levites, bad. Samaritans, good. Except this is 2020. And when you would have heard this story way back when, 2,000 some years ago, or give or take, you would have had a little bit different reaction. So priests and Levites would have been the heroes, right? This is the, the priests, right? You get that one. Levites would have been the scribes, the keepers of the law the Torah, in the Jewish tradition. Very, very important folks that would help to settle disputes, etc., etc., etc. So these are two really important people. And a Samaritan was a brand of Jew who was an outsider who was hated. Just hated. They were not uh, kosher, as, as we might say. They would not be the ones you would expect. And so an early audience would hear a priest and a Levite, and being that they assumed they were good people, made excuses. Hmm excuses for them. Oh, well, the priest, if he touches someone who's damaged like this, might be ritually impure to do the rituals at the temple. Oh, the Levite probably had a really important meeting. And so, of course, it makes sense that they wouldn't stop because they have important things to do. And this person on the road should have known better because this stretch between Jerusalem and Jericho is very, very dangerous. And so they could have made excuses very easily. But when Jesus throws a Samaritan in there, the crowd would have gasped and said, oh, no, 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 those type of people don't do that. And yet, Jesus uses a Samaritan, one who is assumed to be outside, to be assumed to be other, to be assumed to be outside of God's grace and says, the one who does what is right is the one who shows mercy, regardless of who you think they are. It should in our ears in a modern thing say, well, who do we see showing mercy to people? Because they are the ones that are doing the work that we're called to do in the kingdom of God. The others may have good excuses, but Jesus is not looking for excuses. He's looking for doers of the word, not just hearers. He's looking for those who will show mercy no matter what. Uh, we could go into a lot of other things about this story, which we will at other times, but I think it's pretty clear. If you want to be like Christ, if you want to walk the path that he offers, you need to show mercy, period. No excuses, no questions, not I have other important things to do. You must show mercy if you're to walk the path of the one who leads us. We'll see you soon.